Here we are. Yes, we are here with... Annie just joined us. Yeah, I just joined you. With the big... <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to look. <laughs> <laughs> the big red lollipop. Yeah. Who's it by Christina? Roxana Khan wrote the story. Because I am so black all of the story. And this <clears throat> this was published by the Penguin Group in Yay. 2010. The Penguin Group. So we are reviewing this book today. We really loved it. And it made us think, it made us feel. Basically, the story starts and causes us, the reader, listener, to leap into this space between um, a mother's cultural beliefs and that of a birth country and her daughter's U.S. or Canadian acculturated uh, life. We don't have a lot to go on in terms of exactly where the mother is from, the cultural background of the kids, um, where they are, but it, it seems to be the United States or Canada. Can we tell them we're cheating? Why are we cheating? We're cheating because we read the author's biography that we know. She's from Pakistan and moved to Canada when she was three. This is based on a real Yes. Which makes it um, all the more touching and all the more funny. I really appreciate knowing that in the background. But again, this doesn't have to just be pertaining to that particular background. It's no. Water implications. I love this book. Um, pros and cons. We have a lot of pros. We we didn't really want to even call them cons we in call this them case. Questions. Yeah. Pros. All right. Um, first of all, I love the illustrations, and I think Annie's going to pick back on some of these, but not all of them. I love the illustrations and the details. The book has very clean, uh, clean, very, uh, not a lot of filling of the space. For an example. So, like, there's a lot of empty space here, but the objects that are in the picture are very heavily detailed. I love the detail on all the fabric in the story. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, all, well, the, all, clothing, the, all yeah, the clothing, the clothing is really detailed, but with a lot of blank space around it, which really gives a lot of focus to the things that matter in the story, and it draws the person design. That's true. Yes. I agree with that. You think so? Yes. Very right, good. The story has a lot of um, very careful repetition of specific phrases, of specific themes, and again, we really try hard not to give them spoilers, which is really hard. But there is some very nice repetition that really makes the story flow really well. For a younger listener, repetition is always good in terms of just language and listening and building vocabulary and getting involved in the story. I really appreciated that. And there's a really nice suspense aspect in different parts of the story. A really nice points for the teacher or the parent who's reading the loud just hang on for a minute and give it some time. It's just nerves built into the listening channel. I hope that that's next. Mm-hmm. How about you? What'd you like? So, oh, I, I drink tea. I I didn't real, fully realize it till Christina said it, but there is suspense at the end. You really don't know which way it's going to go, and that's really cool. And then we even had a discussion about which way it may go after the book, and that's not clear either, but it's fun to talk about it. So that's a big pro for me as well. Another thing, I, I also really like the illustrations. I like the color. There's lots of colors. You guys may have figured out by now. I'm a bit of a color junkie. So I liked how colorful the book was. Another thing I really liked, again, without spoiling it, is there are a lot of messages of, or I should say opportunities model, is probably better way to put it, to choose acceptance, to choose compassion, um, because these are, as we discussed, two cultures meeting each other and not totally understanding each other. Would that be fair to say? I would say so. And it's um, two cultures within this, it's two cultural sides in the same family, as so often happens um, for the second generation uh, children. You know, they find themselves kind of in this really difficult spot. And in the story, the choice that people might be tempted to take for the main characters is one that's less compassionate. But nevertheless, compassion is shown. Acceptance is always shown. On numerous occasions, sometimes it, to Christina's point, by people you might not expect to be the one showing her compassion yeah. and acceptance. Which leads me to my other pro, which is that in different areas, and we won't say how, the kids teach the mom some of the new culture's, I don't know what you want to say, Expectations, just social, social, social norms, social norms. It's um, the the main character in the story is probably a second or third grade child, and and well, she's kind of treading between two different worlds here. And her mom makes choices on her behalf that makes sense from her mom's point of view, and it don't always flow here. Or and makes sense. Or makes what, sense for what the daughter is going through. Yeah, so, what daughter has to fit into. And it's, it's a difficult spot, and it's one that I think is felt by a lot of people, by a lot of, by a lot of young people who are in this position. And so, um, 
you know, it is a two-way street, but it, it's a hard one because there's also the generation. This is mom. Right. So how do you navigate that with mom? That brings up one of my refined observations. It's called the observations. Yeah. This one is it crazy? Yeah. Okay. This one made me crazy. She got a little angry. I got a little upset at my. I read this to her. She got a little angry. Yeah, she went to me. And one of the, being at, maybe because I'm an oldest child, when you deal with uh, a mother who's from a different culture than the one you're put into as a child, when you're the oldest, you're often the, what did I say? Well, you're really the guinea pig and kind of the pioneer. So I'm really yeah. being a pioneer. Because you, more than the other children in your family, have to straddle these two cultural ideas. Or as our friend, Laura Helena says, they're in the liminal space. Mm -hmm. Not quite in either culture. And so they have to break the barriers, and they kind of have to train their parents. And they sort of, if they're lucky, get to train their friends as well yeah. about both cultures, if you will. You know, parents about the new culture, friends about the old culture. And so you already start to see some of this in terms of what the oldest child has to do and how that may or may not trickle down into the other siblings. Did you have observations you I, want to share? I, you know, we kind of wrestled with this for a while in terms of the arc of the story. And this is where I'm going to come, I'm probably just going to spoil it all over the place. Yes. If you don't want it spoiled, turn off right now. Yes. Just click the video off. Ignore what we said. Yeah, just click it off. Okay. So uh, the the key event in the story is a birthday party to which the oldest I was invited to. And the mom, coming from her background, where the siblings go, where the oldest goes, says, you can go to the party, you can take your little sister. He was screaming, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm At the party, this being was like a second, third grader party. I mean, in the book, it's not shown. The hosting parents are not pictured. But it's obvious that this is a party that was planned with parent intervention. Um, you know, there are big bags. There are organized games. Parents had a hand in this. But during the party, the, the main character had to take care of her little sister. So she was just kind of stuck in kind of the Not really able to participate in the games and the party fully because she had to take care of her little sister. And that trickled over to other birthday party invitations where it became clear that wherever this daughter went, the little sister had to come to So she didn't get to the parties after this one. Which made me really sad and mad at the mom. Annie and I feel possibly it was a missed opportunity. And taking this out of the story arc, you know, into, into a real world thing where this might have happened to the author, as she indicated, uh, it was a missed opportunity for the host of parents to you know, step in and just very gently make one little change so that there wasn't that very visible space between the older sister and her friends. Well, it was an opportunity for them, the hosting parents, to model acceptance and compassion by, as you said, taking the little sister aside and maybe entertaining her in games or activities that were more appropriate for her age and also then allow the older, the older sister to fully engage with her peers, with her friends. But as you pointed out, because I got so involved with this idea, I loved it. If the author had chosen this, then we it would be have a story. Yeah, we, it would have to be a different story. Yeah. So what does this have to do with acceptance? Obvious question. Well... It has to do with acceptance because uh, one culture is the mom's culture. Mom is starting to learn about another culture. And that since she's placed her kids in a different culture, she's starting to realize the consequences of some of her decisions and perhaps being more accepted of the current culture that she's in through the eyes of her children. Yeah, and children as her daughter experiences her. it. Yeah. And this is by no means an easy thing we're talking about. It's not, this is a children's story book in real life. In Wait, you had to navigate it in I Japan. have navigated yeah. this space. Yeah. So have my children and my yeah. husband and my family. Um, it is a very hard space to navigate. Um, being on the outside looking in and then starting to understand that the culture that you're surrounded by, but you're not fully part of it. It is a very liminal in-between space. You feel very unanchored and untethered. And that's the heart of this book is exploring that untethered place where an awful lot of people have to live. Yeah, you're yeah. in it, but you're not of it. Yeah. You know, but this also gives the, the other side acceptance, and that an awful lot of what the older daughter goes through is experiences where there's a lack of acceptance that grows from her classmates, where they aren't exactly accepting her, and they realize that where she goes, where the sister goes. Instead of finding a way to embrace that, she's not invited to parties anymore. We can't say what happens at playground or at play dates or anywhere else. But not being invited to birthday parties is a big deal when you're a second year. It's huge. And it does inform the rest of your life. Like in very, you know, it, it kind of bleeds over. So this is this is a huge issue for her. And you know, it is it is demonstrated what happens with the public acceptance. And you know, that does make us sad. Actually la lack of acceptance on both sides. Lack of acceptance yeah. by the mom 
a lack of acceptance by the kids. Yeah, but two very different reasons. Right. So you said something very interesting about being challenged and how being challenged can lead to yeah. compassion and acceptance. Yeah. Well, I think the book what? really shows that. that. <laughs> I think the book really shows that. Being challenged in this book shows how meeting, rising to that challenge can encourage both acceptance and compassion in ways that can be unexpected or from unexpected people. Yeah. Yeah. So you say? I would say. This book on the surface is a very simple story you have to dig into. It. And an awful lot of stories are like this, where um, if you just read a story to a child or with a child as a parent or a teacher, and equally or more numerous number of stories you know, really deserve some questioning and some discussion and kind of digging in that takes time. And it takes an investment. I read this to Annie, and she suggested that I should say a few things about how I read it. Um, I've been a teacher for 27 years. I read a lot of books, and I love books, and I love language arts, and I love discovering books with children. Um, the foundation of when I when and how I read a book is questions. Very open-ended questions um, that invite the children to come. So, for example, in the section where the party happened, I went to a book, I said, you know, it doesn't look like she's having a great time at the party. I wonder what could have been different about the party so that she could have, you know, both of them could have had a good time to say, what do you see? Um, you know, my answers need to be uh, you know, non-judgmental, you know, just taking them in. And then if I do need to go in a place where maybe a gentle correction or something needs to be done, the child says something possibly that needs a little guidance, you know, like I do that, I'm hoping they're open-minded and maybe very gentle. But for the most part, they're going to be talking, you know, shouting out their ideas and what they see in pictures and getting them excited about the story. This also involves being comfortable with silences and waiting. So at the suspense points, I would just hold the book open and I would read to the suspense point, and I wait. What I love about this is it's really like a Rorschach test. Is Christina stays so neutral? It's pretty cool because you have to sit there, and it allows you to see things that I don't think I would have seen otherwise. And of course, a part of me is thinking, "Oh, Christina, just tell me what you're thinking or what you see." She's very good at not doing that, and then it it really allows and kind of challenges me or anyone she's meeting to, or that you, the educator or parent, are meeting to. To dig a little deep and, and really take in the pictures, take in the story, and see what what comes out of that. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it once I got used to it. Yeah. A lot of parents and teachers are very afraid of sciences because that's where the mischief creeps in. Uh, so you have to judge them, but don't be afraid of them because that's when their minds are thinking. That's when not everybody. If you're in a classroom, you know, you're going to have somebody not chewing on your words. But for the most part, you keep that conversation going, and they will come up with amazing things. So. That's what I do. That's Christina's teacher tip for today. Or parent tip. Or parent, teacher. yeah. Educator, parent. I'm an aunt. Aunt tip. Aunt tip. Love this book. And we love that Betsy Bird recommended it. I was just going to say, it. yeah. Thank you, Betsy, for Thank recommending you, Betsy. it. A powerful, wonderful book. Lots of things to dig into. So, ready? Ready. Remember, Remember choose acceptance. acceptance. Thank you.